Hello and welcome to this episode of DTAC. Today we're going to install GNS3. So some reasons you may want to use GNS3 is because it's a very good software to be able to test network topologies and things like changes before you actually implement them. So let's say maybe I have a network and I want to test an access control list rule. I want to see what is that block. Or maybe I have three different routes in my network and I'm using EIGRP to load balance between them. I may need to figure out the right variance value to include all of those three routes to load balance them. And you know, you don't want to go testing that on your production network. That, that won't be a good day for you. So we're going to go ahead and open up your web browser <clears throat> and we're going to go to GNS. 3.com and once there you want to go ahead and click on free download and um, if you have Windows you can install that Mac or Linux I'm on Linux Mint in this case so we're gonna go ahead and click download on there so you do you do want to use Ubuntu based distributions uh, to follow those instructions if you have a Debian based distribution you can follow these instructions down a little bit lower. So the first thing we want to do here <coughs> is these commands have to be entered in our terminal. So we're going to open up a terminal here. And for simplicity, I'm going to copy and paste them just to save some typing errors there. So what this does here is adds a repository. So this just gives us a new place to install packages from. Do be careful if you add repositories for other types of software that you may not trust, but this is okay here. So we're going to hit enter. Of course, type your password. And this pulls in the uh, public key there for the signing as well as adding the repository. So we know the packages we're getting are secure and everything. That's the signing key for them. And that's what you want to see when it... Uh, is successful imported one the next command here is we're just gonna go ahead and uh, do an update of those repositories and then we want to go ahead and install these two packages and what those two packages are are we have the interface for it for us to interact with and the server part manages uh, essentially the virtual machines and the emulation you're using to uh, run all of these devices. Because you can run switches with this, you can run Cisco IOS, you can run, uh, let's see, Junos, I believe uh, Extreme Networks has an image as well, all from importing them in there. So from here though, um, this means <clears throat> you want to have your user that's running this you want to give them the permissions to run uBridge and this is how it operates with uh, that program to send uh, packets through the virtual network because remember this is inside of your computer and it, the VMs can be on networks that don't exist uh, physically so we have to have the right permissions for that so we're gonna say yes and here we do want super non super users to be able to capture packets because we can analyze them with Wireshark and things. Now, this isn't good for security, mind you. Um, I would not be doing this unless it was if, if if it was any other system. Don't do this. But because it's a it's a laptop and we know we're safe, we're gonna go ahead and do this. And we're gonna go ahead and let that uh, <clears throat> copy real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. A uh, quick point I want to add to, as this installs, it will uh, have to reload the kernel module for your network card, and that will cause your connection to drop. So this is because of GNS3, just in case you run into that and wonder why. All right, we're finished installing. So um, a few more things you may want to do to your installation of GNS3. Um, if you want IOU support, and that is iOS on Unix, um, this it's basically Linux uh, bin files and images basically that uh, 
Cisco has that you can then emulate in GNS3. But um, you can do that as well. But um, if you need to do that, you have to add the 32-bit uh, package architecture to install it and then just update your repos and then install it. I'm not going to do that here because I don't need that in my use case, but just so you know, it's available. Now, before you actually start GNS3, you want to either log in, uh, log out, rather, and log back in, or reboot the entire machine. Because if you start to use your uh, VMs, essentially, you're going to have a problem with the permissions of a uBridge, and the user uh, won't be able to run GNS3 correctly. So you do either run it as root, of course, you could always do that as well, but I wouldn't recommend that. Um, but for the permissions, just reboot and then they will work correctly. All right, so in this next part, we're going to go ahead and fire up GNS3 and we'll take a look around it and we will import our appliance. All right, so now that you've rebooted, of course, after installation, we're going to go ahead and start up GNS3. So let's go ahead and start it up. And now normally I do want to show you, because I did start it first to test things, um, normally when it first starts you'll see the setup wizard here, up here kind of like that. And what you want to do is run appliances on your local computer. Now the run running appliances on a remote server is what that GNS3 virtual machine image is. And you can see that as an option as well. What that does is moves all the complex emulation and virtualization of the systems onto a dedicated machine that maybe is more powerful than your laptop you're using. Um, but if you're able to run normal virtual machines, nine times out of 10, you'll be able to do it on your laptop just fine. So we're gonna say next, and you wanna leave these all default and then next and finish. So when it says create a project, you're going to have to do that first before you can interact with a lot of the software. So we're going to say file, new blank project, and let's just say test here, and hit OK. And of course overwrite it, if it's already there. <clears throat> so this is your main workspace. This is where you'll move things around, connect your different uh, network devices together and other things like that. So like if we want an Ethernet hub. You can also use switches though, which of course we know are an improvement over hubs. We can use switches if we want as well. You can do some basic uh, VLANs and 802.1Q trunking with them and things of that nature. If you want to delete, just highlight, hit your delete key and you can delete those there. This is your summary of your server and again um, Normally, if this was remote, it would just show you the remote uh, specs, and it wouldn't normally be the uh, this machine itself that it's running on. So what we want to do, though, is go to Edit and uh, Preferences, and under, this is QEMU VMs, this is where you can take uh, QCOW2 images for different appliances like uh, Cisco ASAs, um, Extreme Networks has one. Uh, I'll show you this one here. Uh, QEMU seems to be a little bit slower than other virtualization in this, even like Dynamips. But um, you just have that there. You tell it the amount of memory for this QEMU VM. And then this is how you access the virtual machine. And this is the image here you can use and load. So if we say finish and apply, and then we can um, go ahead, see if we can find it, test, and we go ahead and drag that out there. And then if we start it, because I, I do want to show you something that happens. <coughs> Excuse me. If you right click and go to console, you're going to get an error message. Now the reason is, is if your Linux distribution, or you know if you're using FreeBSD or whatever, doesn't have Xterm installed, it won't launch what you need to access the console of the device. So to fix that, we need to go to Edit, Preferences, 
console applications under general and it's actually really cool you can just change it here and hit edit and then we can select uh, what you have like if you were on Kubuntu you may use KDE console we use mate terminal on the one I'm using so we're gonna hit that hit apply and now if we try to console in works a little bit better now QEMU is a uh, emulation and it's actually emulating a CPU architecture as well so sometimes it's a lot slower than like VirtualBox or VMware player so we're gonna go ahead and just let that uh, do what it's doing there to boot uh, now the next thing I want to show you though you can import VirtualBox machines into GNS3 and I need you to see first though that I have actually created some test virtual machines that I was messing around with earlier now what I want to do is import the router virtual machine into GNS3 so I'm gonna to go to edit preferences <clears throat> and VirtualBox VMs and we're gonna say new and once it loads it and interacts with VirtualBox you can pick the virtual machine but you have to create the virtual machines in the respective software so VirtualBox in this case GNS3 just gives you a place where you can make all the different virtualization systems integrate together and create topologies out of them so we're gonna hit router and uh, we're gonna hit finish and one thing to note if you have a need for multiple interfaces because this is this was a router I made in VirtualBox we had more than one interface on there so you can hit two to make you know whatever amount of interfaces you had but um, we can also do it another way and after you hit apply and hit OK um, it will be under end devices but if you want to organize them a little better you can go here to edit for this specific virtual machine and put it under routers if you want to or if you have bridge interfaces in OpenBSD let's say you could create a switch so you could put it then under switching but we just put it under router so we're gonna drag that out and as you can see we have the two devices separate of each other they're using different backends to be emulated uh, you know and virtualized ones using QEMU the other router is using VirtualBox as a backend so what we want to do and uh, it, what you want to do is right click on the one we just made and if you hit configure under network you'll see it's set to one you want to set that to two um, if we <clears throat> aren't using VLANs or anything we want more than one interface so we're gonna go ahead and right click and start that machine actually okay <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and stop those actually for one quick second one second all right do keep in mind the virtualization virtualization um, extensions on the, your CPU can only be used by one application at a time so you can't use QEMU and VirtualBox at the same time you'd have to use an application that does not uh, rely on hardware acceleration for virtualization but um, when you go there to the adapters in VirtualBox you can see we have two devices now if you start this in VirtualBox instead it's going to look different in the adapter section but because this is GNS3 kind of taking over some of the settings and putting its own inside of VirtualBox it looks a little bit different but you can see here we have I set these settings up in VirtualBox separately from GNS3 but because I put it in VirtualBox in a GNS3 rather we can use a virtual machine inside of this with something like uh, Cisco iOS or uh, Juno Sana device and use uh, different emulation that way and test things like routing protocols between different vendors and other stuff like that but uh, with that we're gonna go ahead and just power that off not the best thing to do but this is not neither here nor there just virtual machine 
But with that though, that's how we use uh, GNS3, a little bit about how we get it installed, and some things about it, some pitfalls to watch out for, and all of that. Another thing that I didn't mention at the beginning, this, this is a great tool for learning as well. Don't think you have to know this stuff before you start using GNS3. It is a tool for beginners as well once you learn how to operate it. Because if you're going after certifications or just making you know, you know, your knowledge deeper, you can learn about different systems you might not know otherwise. So if you don't know about GNS3, um, you know it's, it's a great thing to learn. But you can also learn a lot of different network devices and their configurations. And uh, you can make mistakes without blowing up your production network. So that, that's great. So with all that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate uh, you for watching. And as always, it's Tyler with T-Tech.